Howdy folks. The most famous prayer in the world is the Lord's Prayer, or the Our Father, which Jesus taught his disciples in the Sermon on the Mount. Millions of people pray it every single day, but we don't always understand what it means. Most people have a good idea of what the first phrase means, Our Father who art in heaven. It means we're addressing our Father, God, who's in heaven. But the second phrase, at least in the English-speaking world, is widely misunderstood, or even not understood at all. That phrase, hallowed be thy name, is confusing to us. What does it mean? Well, in the phrase hallowed be, the verb be is in what some grammar teacher in the dim, distant recesses of the past may have once told you is the subjunctive mood. We use the subjunctive mood to express a wish or a desire. In modern English, in the way we talk today, we tend to add a helper word like may or let when we are expressing a wish or a desire. And so you could translate hallowed be thy name into contemporary English as may your name be hallowed or let your name be hallowed. Well, that clears it up a little bit, but we still need to know what hallowed means. This is another unfamiliar term. We don't encounter it very often. So where does it come from? Well, it's related and is, in fact, uh, part of the same family as another much more familiar English word, the word holy, which, of course, means sacred. And so when we are... Uh, asking that God's name be hallowed, we are in essence asking that it be holy. Now, that's a little surprising. What does it mean for God's name to be holy? Well, the name symbolizes or signifies the one that it represents, and so God's name represents God, and thus stands in for him in a manner of speaking. If we're asking that God's name be holy, you might think, well, how could that be? If the name stands for the one that it represents, and if God himself is already infinitely holy, which of course he is, how could he be any more holy? It doesn't seem to make sense. But there's another sense in which this term gets used. It doesn't just mean to make something holy. It can also be to recognize or treat something as holy. And it is indeed possible for people down here on earth to recognize God's name and thus God himself as holy and to treat God's name and thus God himself as holy. And that's really the primary thing that we're asking for when we say, hallowed be thy name. We're expressing a wish or a desire that people would recognize God's name as holy and treat him as holy. Now that has some implications because all of our lives are a gift from God and if we misuse that gift, if we live in an unholy manner, then we're not honoring God. We're not treating his gift as something that's sacred and we're not treating him as something that's sacred. And so to recognize in the fullest sense the holiness of God is to be drawn into that holiness, to model one's own life after God's holiness and to try to grow closer to him, the source of all holiness. And that's why the Catechism of the Catholic Church says, asking the Father that his name be made holy draws us into his plan of loving kindness for the fullness of time. When we ask God, hallowed be thy name, or may your name be holy, what we're asking is that he would help us, and not just us, but people everywhere, to treat his name as holy, to recognize him as holy, and to grow in holiness ourselves as a reflection of him, the source of all holiness. Thank you.